In our previous video, we took a look at the fundamental concepts of Git and GitHub. In this video, we are going to explore how to integrate NetBeans and GitHub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new project that is very similar to one that we looked at last week. I'm going to call it Vehicles. Now I'll spare you the details. So we'll start with a Java Java application. Next, I'm going to call this Vehicles. And we'll go ahead and keep a main class. We're going to call it Vehicles.Driver and finish. Okay, so I have something I can work with now, albeit small, but I can work with it. I'm going to click on vehicles, and I'm going to say team, git, and I'm going to say initialize repository. If, remember that GitHub, uh, sorry, that git is a distributed version control system, which means we're going to have a repository locally on our computer, and then we're going to have a remote repository repository as well, excuse me. So this is saying, where do I want that repository to be on my on my local computer? This is fine. Uh, default location, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to say team, and you see that the options have changed. It used to have, you know, a couple of uh, Git and all this stuff. And now I have different options because it knows that this is linked with a GitHub, I'm sorry, with the Git repository. So I choose commit, and I'm going to I'm just going to say initial project. Now, oh gosh, look at this. We have some things that need to be committed but other things that don't need to be committed. So, the build manifest gin files project, not all of these need to be committed, really just the .java file. This is where a .git ignore uh, comes in handy. A .git ignore file says don't commit these files to the the distributed version control system because they contain things that are local to the local environment, like a path, for instance, like C, users, documents, Jones VR, that might be local to my computer. Wouldn't make any sense if I committed that and someone else pulled it down and used it on a computer that doesn't have that. So a lot of times you, you won't know what those files are. We have no idea what build XML is, manifest MF, build impl XML. We don't know what these files are. So a lot of times what we'll do is go to this page, gitignore.io, and what it will do is it will make a recommended gitignore file for your environment. So I might say, okay, NetBeans, and there we go. You see it auto-completes and then generate. And this is going to tell us, okay, these are the files that don't need to be committed to our distributed version control system. So I see anything in the path build, anything in NBD build, uh, NB actions, NB gradle, so on and so forth. So I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to go back down to vehicles, and I'm going to see if I have uh, git ignore IO. It doesn't look like I do. So let's make one. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. What we need to do is we need to make a file at the root of the project called git ignore. And the idea is that anything in that file will be ignored by git, will not be committed, will not be pushed up to the central repository. Again, these are things specifically where it's relying on a path local to my computer that wouldn't make sense on another computer. So what I might do is um, I'll say new, and then I'm going to say other, and then we have to scoot down here to other again, and then empty file, and then next, and we have to call this a very specific syntax, dot git ignore, because that's what git is looking for. If it finds that file, it opens the file, looks at the entries, and ignores those entries. So I choose finish. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste what we got from gitignore.io, which is really handy. And I'm going to save. And I want to do an experiment here. Let me right-click on vehicles. And we're going to say git and commit. I could also get that from the Teams menu up above, whichever I want to do. Git commit. And let's take a look at... Um, project.xml, just remember that. Gen files properties, build XML, any of these. Let's focus on project XML. Let's say in theory, I want to remove that one. So I'm going to go back uh, and I'm going to say project.xml. I'm simply going to add that entry to my git ignore and save. Right click and once again do a team, I'm sorry, git, and then commit. And take a look, do you see how project dot properties, uh, the, uh, sorry, project.xml no longer exists in this file. So you see, once I added it to dot git ignore, 
remove that file from the list of files that I'm going to commit. Now, I just wanted to demonstrate that functionality, but this is actually a file I do want to commit and put under version control. So I'm going to re-remove it. I just want to show how that works. Now I'm going to go, a set, go ahead and say uh, git commit, and I'm just going to say yeah, initial project, that's fine, and we'll choose commit. Okay, uh, now that's on my local repository, and so uh, now what I want to do is I might go into driver.java, and as I recall, we had a method called prompt user, so I'm going to say public, uh, we'll say, yeah, public void prompt user, open curly, close curly, and I'm going to save. And now once again, I can right click and you'll see what's interesting is once I save, you see those little blue disks or blue cylinders come up indicating there's a difference between what's in my integrated development environment and what is on my local Git repository. And you see also it's kind enough to put these green brackets in to show what has changed since the last time I committed. Very handy. So I'm going to right click again. And I'm going to say Git commit and I'm going to say add prompt user method and you see that it simply has said okay uh, modified this i'm going to commit drivers java this time it's only committing the one file i changed it doesn't have to recommit any files that have already changed so i choose commit okay now i'm going to say team and i'm going to say remote because i want to push to a repository that's not on my computer probably one that's going to be on github so I'm going to say push, and the first thing it says is, oh, wait a minute now, what's the repository URL? Should be something that ends in .git. I haven't made one yet, so let's go make one. I'm going to go to my, for this, for this instance, I'm going to run to my public GitHub page, because I know sometimes people see these videos on YouTube, and actually this is a little side note here. Uh, getting an image from the image gallery in Android Studio is my most watched video on YouTube. If you look in the comments, a lot of these comments go through and say, can you tell me where to find the source? Where can I find the source? And usually I just respond and uh, give a GitHub link like so. So, uh, and then those people can clone it. And, and, you know, as with anything I put on GitHub, on the public GitHub, you are more than welcome to use it, uh, you know, freely available, use it all you want. So, okay, I'm in my repositories, but at this point I'm looking at it is is not signed in. I'm looking at this kind of as a as a public person. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And by the way, I have a series of videos that describe how to create a GitHub account. I've already created one, so I'm not going to walk through that in this video. It's easy to do, like anything else on the web. It's easy enough to um, it's easy enough to create an account. You see, once I've signed in, I see my repositories again, but I also see this option called New. So I'm going to click on new, and this repository name, I'm going to say US 16, that would be summer semester of 2016, and we're going to call this vehicles. Okay, public. Uh, if it's a public repository, there's no charge. For private, GitHub does have some pricing plans. You know, once again, this is your intellectual property, very valuable. We don't want to mess around with something getting deleted or getting in the wrong hands. So private, you do have to pay but public is freely available. And here again, remember, resume. Think about having your GitHub repository as, a, as your resume. Instead of handing out a traditional resume, give a business card with your LinkedIn profile and your GitHub address. Honestly, enough said after that. I would be more impressed with that if I'm interviewing someone than if I got a resume. So I'm gonna click Create Repository. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. It's, this gives me this URL here, so I click. I go back to NetBeans now and repository, repository URL. Uh, I go ahead and paste in that URL I just got from GitHub. Once again, I'm going to need my uh, username and password. I'm going to go ahead and click Save Password, make life a little easier on me. Uh, choose Next. Okay, uh, Master Branch is fine. Uh, there's a concept of branching, which is an advanced concept. Don't worry about that. We'll stick with just Master at the moment. Next and finish. Now we'll look for a little status. Yeah, we'll look for a little status there at the bottom. It looks like everything's good. Let's go back now to uh, GitHub and take a look. Here we are. So you see, I didn't pause the video or anything. What you saw was real time. That all committed very quickly. 
And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go and say commits. And look, we have our history that I just did, the initial project, six minutes ago during this video, and then adding the prompt user method. Click on this little change set, and you can see a very simple way that we added the prompt user method. Now I VPN to the UC network, and I am on the virtual lab. So virtual machine, again, hosted at UC, not on my laptop. I'm simply viewing it from my laptop, but a completely different hardware. So I have navigated to the GitHub repository here from the virtual machine. And I've also opened up NetBeans. Again, completely different NetBeans implementation. The same version, but different implementation. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to clone the repository onto this machine, make a change, and push it. And so to clone the repository, starting from this front page on uh, GitHub, I just went to github.com slash discospip which is my username. I go to US 16 vehicles. Now I'll take a look at this URL here. It ends in .git and that's the one we want. We can copy it with control C or simply click this icon here. That's the unique identifier for this GitHub repository. Uh, side note, by the way, I mentioned UC has its own GitHub implementation. Uh, that is entirely internal to UC. Everybody at UC has access to that through your Bearcat ID. Um, but unless you make it public, it's not publicly viewable. So if there is something that you want to keep local as a student or faculty or staff or anything, uh, you're certainly welcome to use that. Um, one advantage of the public GitHub, though, is that, that resume factor. So anyway, I go ahead and put in us16vehicles.git. Uh, I'm going to use my username and password. Uh, you can certainly allow others in as well. Uh, if you go to your GitHub repository, now, you do have to sign in, which I just did off screen, but go to your repository. So you see my uh, repository for this project, Contributors, Settings, and uh, then Collaborators. And now here you have a place where you can search. Um, uh, I'll just search for <laughs> Jones, common name, of course. I could add any of these people and give them uh, uh, commit access to my repository. They won't be able to, co to commit to it until I've specifically added them as a collaborator. They can pull from it if it's public, but they can't commit to it uh, unless I've specifically added them as a collaborator. Nonetheless, I personally only have one GitHub account. I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my own account. Uh, choose next. Go ahead and let it clone. Uh, master branch is fine. Destination directory, fine again. And then I choose finish. And we'll give it just a moment to initialize. Uh, choose Open Project. And now this probably looks familiar. Now, by the way, to clone a project, you do not need to log in as I just did. You don't have to provide your username and password if you're simply cloning for a read-only copy. So if you want to get my source code from my lectures and download it locally, you don't need to send me an email and say, hey, can you add me as a collaborator? Uh, no, collaborator is just if you want to push a change but you can clone all you want, no account needed. So I'm gonna to go to vehicles now, and I'm going to um, right click and choose new, and then Java class. And again, I know we did a lot of this in last week's lecture. I'm just kind of starting it from scratch so we can keep these changes in Git now. And the other class I had was called vehicle. So I'm gonna call it vehicle, and I'm gonna choose finish. And I think we had a couple of, well, I could go ahead and commit what I have so far. We'll do, go ahead and do a team commit. And we'll just say add vehicle. And we typically won't do very, you know, commits should definitely not be too large. Uh, but a lot of times it represents one feature we've done or, or, or one, one small change we've made. It doesn't have to be terribly small either. So uh, I, I, I will say this. I would rather a bunch of very small changes than very few large changes because the value is really seeing that diff from one change to another and understanding what happened um, maybe one day apart or a couple hours apart as opposed to three months apart. Three months apart, you end up with a huge number of changes that all get committed at once. And if you're working with other people, you're also gonna run into uh, more merge issues if you wait to commit until the end of the month or you're not doing commits very frequently. Whenever you do a commit, it's always a good idea to do a pull and an update, which is inherent in a clone, so I don't need to do it here. Uh, always a good idea to do a pull and an update first to make sure you're working with the latest code. 
If not, you might be changing a file that someone else changed yesterday. Uh, and then when you go to commit, you're going to have a merge conflict. So to avoid merge conflicts, always remember pull update before making any changes. Okay, I believe we had an attribute called private int. Uh, well, let's make that a double gallons of gas. And then we also had our private int mpg. Okay, and then a little bit of right click action and refactor. And we will say uh, encapsulate fields. Okay, uh, select all, refactor, and that generates our getters and setters. And so that's saved. Uh, we see the little disk icon, which re uh, rec uh, represents a difference between the current state and our last commit. So get commit. Okay, uh, we're going to say add gallons of gas and MPG plus getters and setters. And I'm going to go ahead and say commit. Okay, now team, remote, remember this guy and push, which means we're pushing it up to this repository. It has saved my username and password. I choose next and next and finish. I go back out to the repository and we should see, if I go to commits, we should see now, whoops, sorry, one extra S. We should see now a total of uh, four commits, which includes the brand new class called vehicle plus those attributes and getters and setters. Excellent. Okay, so now I minimize, and I'm going to go back to my NetBeans on my local computer, and I'm going to say team, remote, pull. Okay, so remember, back on, I know that wasn't a huge transition there, but I'm back on my local laptop. I'm the virtual machine on the UC network I've minimized. So I go ahead and choose next, and I choose finish. And what it's doing now is it's pulling down those changes I did under on a separate computer. Uh, could have been a separate account just as well. And now take a look. On my local NetBeans instance, I have those changes that I made on the UC Virtual Machine. So if you're working with, if you're collaborating with others, this tool is absolutely invaluable. Uh, even if you're working by yourself, it has a lot of merits because you have that commit history. You can revert to a previous version. You can see a history of changes. If you lose your laptop, it gets stolen or broken, you still have all these changes stored in Git. And of course, this helps to build your portfolio. So I hope this has been useful. In our next series of videos, we're gonna to continue to extend this, this uh, program that we're writing, and we are uh, going to continue to use Git and GitHub. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.